Algebra 2 students, when you get into Schoology, you're going to see that there are a lot of things in here that can help you out. So whether or not we're distance learning or on a, a daily basis, there may be some things that you need to use in here. The first thing that you'll see is our special Google Meet schedule that has to do with when we're on full distance learning. And so if you click on that, you'll be able to see the times for the schedule. There they are, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday, we teachers have the mandatory PLC meetings from 7.15 to 8.15, so we're not available. Notice that the schedule doesn't start until 8.20. So this is in here to help you remember which day is what time. Now, you're probably already used to that anyway, given that Friday is always a distance learning day. Next up, we have a PDF, and this is called Daily Steps to Take for Success. And this is going to follow really closely with the things that I talk about in this video today. So daily procedures. You always want to use your Chromebook and your school email account and be certain that everything that you put in there is school appropriate, including your icons. If you have an icon that somebody would say, well, that's not right, then remove it. Put a new one on there. First place you might want to go if you did not come into school to get your note packets would be the black folder that says digital copies of worksheets and handouts. And right here you're going to see the notes packet. And this is the one I, I really would recommend that you print this out if at all possible. If you can't print it out, then you can't. You know, if you don't have access to a printer, you can download this and then it would be in a file that you could email to somebody that does have a printer or maybe your folks are actually working in an office that has a printer and they could print it out for you. And that's because it keeps everything so well organized as far as your, your notes go. You don't have to print it out. Like I said, you could use it like a book where you're just thumbing along here. And the best thing to do if you're taking notes on normal notebook paper would be label like crazy. You know, label concept byte, page 360, examples A, B, and C. So that when you look at your notes later, you'll know exactly what you were working on at any given time. So if you label, you should be perfectly fine just with normal notebook paper. You don't have to print anything out. You don't. Now, this is also where you're going to find any worksheets or anything that is normally a handout when you're in class. So anytime you're thinking, oh, today it says we have to have a worksheet. Well, where do I find that worksheet? It's in the black folder and there'll be a date by it to let you know, hey, this is what we should be printing out today. For chapter six, right here, this power chart, that's also something that's gonna come in very handy. So you'll want that around as we start talking about powers. We're dealing more with, with exponents and radicals and things like that in second semester in chapter six. Now, you have your note packet. What should you do? Well, you should attend the Google Meet. And what you want to do is make sure you're in the Google Meet following along with the lesson, asking and answering any questions as needed. And the daily Schoology update will tell you exactly what you need to do. Now, obviously, this was, well, it was actually the last day of, of first semester that I had students because it's talking about a particular test day and what the test schedule is. But most of the time you're going to see this message. Please remember to mark yourself present. Check your Schoology update, Schoology comments, Schoology email account daily. The reason I have you check your Schoology comments is because occasionally somebody tries to uh, send in a homework assignment that doesn't show any work. And when that happens, you don't receive credit. And so in the Schoology comments, I'll let you know you need to redo and resubmit this assignment. It's best to make sure that you're showing all of your work on everything before you hand it in. But like I said, Schoology comments would be where I let you know you're not getting credit for this. You need to redo it and resubmit it. You all know by now that all of the answers are on Schoology. So just writing answers down does not earn you points. 
So make sure that you're showing all of your work. And then of course your school email in case I have something specific that I have to talk to you about. And then like it says, pay attention to the daily lesson calendar, have a graphing calculator handy. If you don't have one, use Rapid Identity and keep your tab open for that graphing calculator. You're going to get a code for the Google Meet. You have to make sure that you're on your Chromebook and you're using your isd.728.org email account. If anybody tries to sign in with anything else, I'm not gonna let you in. You have to have that at isd728.org account. Try to make sure that your background is blurred. Um, most people have an icon by now. Like I said, make sure it's school appropriate. Nothing questionable should be on there. And then come into the lesson muted. But feel free to unmute if you need to ask or answer questions. That's been a little bit tough during the Google Meets. It seems like everybody is really quiet. So please try to make sure that if you know what the answer is, you're sharing it. That actually is proven to help you learn. When you are discussing things that you've learned, you get an in-depth look at it, and it goes into your long-term memory a lot quicker than if you're just sitting there and taking notes. And then after the lesson, they'll have the homework assignment on here. That's one of four places you'll be able to find the homework assignment. And then you'll find your Google Meet code for the day. And down here is a link to the daily lesson calendar for Algebra 2. You can, if you want to, click on that and then um, it'll take you to a spot where it's going to ask me to share it with you. But it is the exact same thing that you will see right here in the daily learning calendar. So to be successful, you are in the Google Meets, you're following the lesson exactly as you should, but if you're a distance learner, you've got a job and you're not gonna be available for the Google Meet, every day I do videotape the lessons that we do as part of that Google Meet. And so you could go into the daily learning calendar here and you could see exactly what section it is and find the date that you need because there are, like I said, videos of every single lesson. So after you know which one you're supposed to watch, you can go down to the green folder. And these, I'm, I'm still trying to determine whether or not I wanna take these out of here or not. These are old ones. And the old videos are not the best quality. Um, I'm redoing all of the videos this year but if you want to stay up with what we're doing each day in class and you can't be at the Google Meet, then um, if nothing else, you could watch one of these older videos. Each day I videotape the lesson as we cover it and that'll be third, fourth, and fifth hour. And then I have to download it and upload it onto YouTube to get everything to work right. Typically I have all of those lessons up by 12, 1230 every day. And then you could watch the newer version of the lesson that we've covered during the Google Meet. So this is where every one of those daily lesson videos will go after we're done for the day. So now you've gotten to that green folder of the daily lesson videos to watch when absent. When I place those in this folder, I also make a copy of the completed lesson notes that we've taken, and this is gonna be empty because obviously we haven't had any lessons so far in second semester. But I will always place a PDF copy of the notes just in case you're thinking, oh gosh, I think I missed that one step. You could go in here and get those notes. But again, you need to be in the Google Meets so that you can see exactly what we're doing. You can ask questions about anything you don't understand. That's gonna be the best way for you to learn during the distance learning. Now, at the end of the lesson for each one of these videos, there's going to be an assignment. If you are using the older videos, it's quite possible you are doing more than what we are doing in class because these assignments have been trimmed down during distance learning. So you wanna know what the assignment is, probably best not to go to the old videos. You want to look, use the updated videos or you'd want to go to campus because I have the assignments in there and it'll say the due dates and everything that you need on campus. It'll also be in the blue folder, which is where you're going to turn your assignments in. And it lists the due dates again, but it also lists the section, pages, 
and which numbers we're going to be completing. There are places that you can find out what the daily assignment is. You can watch the daily lesson video and at the end the assignment will be listed there. You can go into campus and campus will have those daily assignments in there. You can go into the blue folder down here and all of those assignments will be listed. And each day when you go to get your new Google Meet code, it'll be on there as well. So no excuses about not knowing what the assignment is. <laughs> there are gonna be all kinds of places where you can find that. And then you wanna go ahead and complete that assignment. You've now watched the daily lesson video and or been a part of the Google Meet and work through the assignment. If you have some problems that you don't know how to do, you need to go down here to the Frequently Asked Questions videos for Chapter 6. And you find whatever section it is that we're working on, and you go into that section looking for your specific problem. That took a little longer than normal. These are the and these I call the frequently asked question videos. And what happens is students over the years have asked for the exact same problems again and again. And I made a video explaining how to do those problems. So that's really helpful if you are at home and you've forgotten how to do a problem. Use the frequently asked question video and you can fast forward through it and rewind as many times as you need to. But the biggest thing about the frequently asked question video is that I explain how to do it. So you're not just copying things down blindly, you're actually learning how to do the problems that you were having trouble with. And that's all in the purple folder, the frequently asked questions. So you did your assignment and you're thinking everything looks good, then the next step would be to check your odd answers in the back of your book, all the odd answers to the homework are there. If you are a very honest person, you probably never knew that, but they are. All the odd answers are in the back of the book. And then all the even answers will be listed in this orange folder. So you'll be able to go in here and this one obviously is a little bit longer because it has sections, the concept bite through section, section 6.3. So there are the answers to the homework. Because in order to turn in an assignment, you have to have all of the problems completed and they have to be correct. You can't turn them in if things are wrong. Now, you've corrected your assignment and you realize, oh, I, I did number 72 wrong. Well, then look on the frequently asked question videos because it's quite possible that somebody has already asked for that one in the past. Or maybe they asked for number 71, which would be right before it, or number 73, which would be right after it. And if you use that video, you can complete those problems. So all the problems have to be done and they have to be done correctly in order for you to turn them in and get full credit. And that's because I need to hear from you if you are not able to do these. Students who are struggling, you need to get in contact with me. We can do a Google Meet at the end of the day and go over problems. But your first place to go is the frequently asked question videos because it's very, very possible that what you need is already there. Now you've completed those assignments and that's what the blue folder is for. So the blue folder has the assignments and you're going to click on the submission and you'll enter that into um, the, the, the correct assignment, obviously. Make sure that you're taking clear photos. I have to be able to read and see and you have to show all your work. I do not accept assignments that have just the answers and that's because we gave you all of the answers back here. So you're not going to get any points. You're not going to earn any points for copying answers down. That's not how it works. You have to show all of your work in order to earn credit. Assignments are due every day and you'll submit those in to the blue folder again. If there's an issue, if you didn't show enough work, I'm going to leave you a little Schoology comment. And that's why I mentioned before that you should be checking your, your Schoology comments 
uh, should be a little bell up here at the top that lets you know you've got notifications as you're going through there. Now, if you turn it in on time, you're going to receive a two, which is full credit. If you turn it in late, you'll receive a one, which is half credit. And all the homework for a unit is due before we take the test. So on the day of the test, Anybody that still has M's for missing in campus, all of those will change to zeros. You are not allowed to turn in homework for a unit after we've taken the test. Homework is to prepare you for the test. So you need to be completing that in advance in order to make that happen. And as an added bonus, people that turn in all their homework before we take the test, you are eligible for test retakes but you have to have all of your work turned in before the test in order to be eligible. Because that tells me you tried your hardest and it still didn't go well. So you have to have all the homework in before you're eligible for the retake. So now you have your homework submitted and we start all over again the next day. Now, if you're wondering about something from the class, chances are really, really good that it is somewhere here on Schoology. And the things that I've just talked about can be found here on Daily Steps to Take for Success. The syllabus we're going to go over in, in just a few minutes. And then here's the daily learning calendar, classroom textbook information, and this has the important one for you would be the textbook online access. So if you don't yet have a paper copy, which we should be taking care of tomorrow, um, we'll get everybody a paper copy of the textbook. You could also use the online access and you can do that through Rapid Identity. And our book publisher, Pearson, uses Savas EasyBridge. So you're going to go to that and you'll be able to get into um, the Algebra 2 class book, um, which is the Pearson book for Algebra 2. Now, if you get in there and it says something about how you need to log in, don't do that. Just go ahead and, and go in to enter. All, um, all juniors, seniors, sophomores and freshmen who are in Algebra 2 should have already be, been given access to the Savas Easy Bridge by the technology department. And if you can't find it, let me know. We can do a Google Meet and I can help you get in there. Now, back to the main page. Here again, digital copies of worksheets and handouts. Anything that I would typically hand out in the classroom as a paper copy will be in there. And the other black folder has graph paper. So if we're graphing and you want to print out some graph paper, this is the place to go. Same thing as before, if you don't have a printer available, but your folks do at work and they can print this out for you, you could always download it and then email it to them. Or chances are pretty good they could just look one up with Google and find you some good graph paper anyway. Here is the other kind of graph paper that we have in the black file there for digital copies of graph paper. And again, we see the green daily lesson videos to watch when absent. And every day by 12, 12.30, at least on a good day when the technology is working, um, the newer lesson will be in there. Daily completed lesson notes will be in as well. And then here we see the homework information. There's the even answers, the frequently asked question videos, and where you should turn in that completed homework every day. So those are the resources that are available to you on Schoology. And along with the daily Schoology updates, there are plenty of places where you can find exactly what it is that we're doing in class and all of the resources that you need to do well. The next thing that we need to talk about is going to be the syllabus. So the materials that we need are the Pearson textbook. And the second day of class, we will uh, make sure that everybody um, has what they need there. For now, you probably will just have to use the online access to the book if you're a distance learner that does not have the Pearson textbook yet. But when you get back in the classroom, we'll make sure everybody gets themselves 
uh, a textbook, so you have the actual paper version. Um, the Pearson site Sabbath, it, it really, it's rare that it goes down, um, but sometimes your internet access is, is a little spotty and that makes it difficult. And then in a normal year, these are all the things that we would like you to have. Again, the graphing calculator, the TI-84 Plus, really, really important that you have those when it comes to MCAs and ACT time. They are definitely worth it. And you need the TI-84 Plus because I have a simulator for my smart board to show you how to use all of that good stuff. You have to make sure you're careful with your textbook. I did have the fines listed in in with the syllabus and the textbook information as well. And then participation, part of your daily work grade includes participation. Points are taken away for poor behavior and lack of responsibility. When we get back into the classroom, we wanna make sure everybody's doing exactly what they need to do to be successful. And most of you are old enough now that you know exactly what that is. So when you're given time in class to complete written work, you're expected to be working. You lose participation points for the goofing around kind of stuff, you know. You shouldn't be going to the locker every day to forget that because you've forgotten things or anything like that. And most of this things that I rarely have to deal with at the Algebra 2 level. Cell phones, however, are a large problem. So make sure that you are turning your cell phones off when you come into class putting them away. It doesn't, it, you just don't need to be grabbing that cell phone and losing your train of thought in the middle of the lesson. Um, there is no text that can't wait a couple of minutes. So make sure that those cell phones are turned off and put away. And your Chromebooks, when we're back in the classroom, they shouldn't be open when I'm teaching a lesson. You should be paying attention to exactly what's going on. Attendance policy, you need to be here. I mean, especially with math. Math is a, a daily learning and a daily building that we do on your math skills. So make sure that you're in class whenever you possibly can be for whether or not it's the Google Meet or in class. When you're absent, you're still responsible for the material that's been missed. And test days, um, you need to make sure that you are open and available for that Google Meet. If we take a test and you've been sick or something and it takes you a few days to get back to class, it's your job to make sure that you get that material taken care of. And that's because when the class takes the next test, if you have missed that deadline for retaking the test, then you're gonna get a zero and you won't be able to go back and make that up. So you have to make sure that everything for a unit is made up before the class takes the next test. All homework is due before, right before, we start taking the test in class. Um, passes, that's e-pass now, and that's definitely a way that they're, they're catching the abuse of pass privileges. So please take care of your business in between classes so that you don't have to use a pass in class. Assignments, homework collected every day, submitted through Schoology right now. They have to be completed, and like it says, all work must be shown in order to receive credit. Notice in bold here twice, you must show your work. I'm giving you the answers on Schoology. Copying down answers does not earn points. So students receive a two for complete, neat, turned in on time homework. And then quality of work and neatness, pretty obviously important. If I can't read what you've written, then I can't give you a grade for it. So set aside time each day to do your homework. Know that these are the shortest assignments I have ever given. And I have been in the Elk River School District since 1994. So especially during the pandemic, we have cut this down big time. If, an, if a problem is part of your assignment, it's because it's valuable and it's something that you need in order to be successful. Quizzes, we don't really do a lot of quizzes in Algebra 2 unless they're formative quizzes, and that's because 
we, for almost all chapters, have cut the chapters into two for testing. So usually our tests are only on three, maybe four sections at a time. But that's that would go in if we did have a quiz as part of your homework grade. So homework and quizzes, 20% um, of your grade. But we all know they count for much more than 20% because if you do all the homework every day and you understand the homework, then you're going to do great on the tests. All tests will be announced in advance and those dates will either be posted on the daily learning calendar or if we're in the classroom, they will be on the backboard of the room. And we use pencils on tests and exams so that we can erase and not scribble. An exam will be given at the end of the semester. Well, we used to say that every single year, but now, uh, given the pandemic, not so sure. We weren't able to have one first semester, and there definitely is no guarantee that we will have one second semester. We'll have to talk to you more about that as we get further along in the calendar. No cell, smartphone, smartwatches, or Chromebooks are to be used in the classroom on quiz or test days unless instructed to do so. And when we're taking tests over the Google Meet, pretty obviously I'm going to use GoGuardian to make sure that you have only the tabs open that you are allowed to have open and um, that you also have the calculator app if you don't have your own graphing calculator. Tests account for 80% of your grade, so study for them. You know, study the first time so that you don't have to go through the retake process. Students say, Mrs. Cedarholm, that retake remedial work, that takes a long time. There's a lot to do there. Yes, there is. So if you do your best and put forth your best effort, on the first test, then you won't have to worry about taking care of all that remedial work. So the retest policy, any tests given within a week at the end of the semester, including the final exam, are not eligible for a retake, and that's district policy. Students will have anywhere from a week and a half to two weeks to retake a test. The due date will always be posted on the front board of the classroom or on the folder in Schoology for retakes. And there are no exceptions for those due dates. A due date is a due date. It's a deadline. Excuse absence or not, the due date stands. So plan your time wisely. Procrastination does not make for exceptions. It's not going to happen. Students must have all assignments turned in for the chapter. That is how you are eligible to go through the retake process. You've already done all the work you were supposed to do, and yet you had a score that you weren't feeling comfortable with. Then you've earned the right to do your retake. The student then will complete a packet of remedial materials before they'll be allowed to retake the test. And it hasn't necessarily been a packet during distance learning. It's been more like a, a folder in Schoology of things that you have to complete in order to do that retake. So once we have corrected that and made sure that everything is going to go well, um, you'll turn it in, turn the photos into me through email, and then we'll be set and we'll talk about when I can open up the test for you on Schoology. And we'll still be doing the retakes on Schoology, and that's because we do have some distance learners that are not going to actually be in the classroom. The higher of the two test scores will be recorded in campus. Cheating. Don't do it. You know, take responsibility for your your hard work or lack of hard work. Um, anyone suspected of cheating will be given an alternate form of a test. Anybody caught cheating is given a zero. Any student using a cell phone, smartphone, smartwatch, other technological advance on a quiz or a test day gets a zero. Your parents are notified. Hopefully you're horrified by your behavior, but then you'll be embarrassed too. And it truly is worse for a student to cheat than it is to just get a low score on a test. You want to take your lumps when you know that you haven't done what you should have done to be prepared. When you're struggling, don't wait until the end of the chapter. There's nothing I can do for you. The test days are test days. That's, that's when you take them. And seek help right away. You know, you can email me um, and let me know. I, this is just not coming to me. Could we meet for a little while and we'll have a private little Google Meet? 
or maybe there are two or three students that need to have a Google Meet about it. Now we don't have elk time given distance learning right now, but you certainly will have time to ask questions in class, so make sure you do that. Use the internet resources, the resources on Schoology, anything that's available for your book. Read and study your book and notes. Get involved with other students in a study group. You know, if you have access to your Google account through school, you can set up a little Google Meet um, with friends to do those things. And a lot of, I know a lot of people use Zoom anyway outside of the classroom situation. Again, seek help before and after school from me. Let me know. You know, I have to know how are things going and um, are you understanding everything? What are you having issues with as you go through it? And then this is the same grading scale that we've had at the middle and high school level for several years now. So 65 is that D minus cutoff. And I'm, I'm so hopeful that second semester um, goes well. And sometimes second semester is a little bit tougher for students than first semester is because we don't go in the order of the book. There are things that we have to touch on in case you guys have to take the MCAs in the spring. And so some people that, that doesn't make sense, you know, doing part of chap doing chapter six, then doing part of chapter seven, going to chapter nine, coming back and finishing up chapter seven. But remember, there is a, a well thought out reason and plan behind everything that we do. Um, we have to make sure that we get all of those standards that the state says must be covered for the MCAs in before you take those. Likewise, for the ACTs, we have to make sure that we have, have exposed you to all of the topics that you are going to see. So now we'll talk about any questions you have about anything in class.